if you want to watch more uh, YouTube videos, um, uh, you can go to mathheels.com and uh, click class information and then go to the appropriate place. <coughs> now let's take a look at uh, properties of the normal distribution. Now the first thing they throw in here really has nothing to do with the uh, normal distribution. Normal distribution is your bell shape. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but it's it's like it's an important uh, topic, but it, it's not enough to fill an entire section. So they kind of throw it in, in um, where it doesn't seem to quite fit. Um, it doesn't include decimals, so I mean it isn't a continuous. So uh, uniform distribution probabilities are the same all the way across. Uh, shape is a rectangle rectangle with area uh, equal to one, and area is the same as probability for these. So. Um, <coughs> Come here. We're talking about uniform. Our shape is going to be a rectangle, like that. And again, the uh, um, area is equal to one, and the uh, the area ties directly to our probability. Well, let's look at a problem here. It says a particular process has uniform probability distribution between ten and thirty. A says draw the graph. <coughs> Okay, so we got uh, 10 to 30. Now this distance right here from 10 to 30 is a distance of 20. Now the area is equal to, um, in terms of rectangle, length times height or width, as the case may be. We said the area is always equal to 1. Because uh, area is your probability, and probability always adds up to 100%, doesn't it? Well, length times uh, width, uh, this length here would be 20, and then W. Now, we can solve for W by dividing both sides by 20. And we get W is equal to 1 20th. So if I were to come over to here, these are our X values here. This is your probabilities that's on this scale. This would be 1 over 20 which is the height of this. Now it's real easy. Once you got your distance here, uh, this value over here is just 1 over whatever you found. So if this was 17, this would be 1 over 17. And that's part A. Part B. What is the probability the process is greater than 25? So greater than 25. Here's 10, and here's 30, and let's say 25 is right there. It really doesn't matter where you put it. Um, it's greater than 25. So greater than 25 would be shaded to the right, like that. Now, remember what we said. Probability uh, is the same as your area. So if I look at this, to find an area of this, this is a rectangle. Distance from 25 to 30, this side here is 5. And then the height is still the 1 over 20. So that would give us our probability and our area. So that's 5 20th, um, 1 4th, which is 0.25. I'm not very good with decimals. Let me actually uh, check that. 5 divided by 20. Yeah, 0.25. Now C, <coughs> I thought I changed that in class, but I must not have saved it. Um, let me put uh, less than 17. <coughs> there we go. Ah, I've saved it. So C. Okay, what is probably the process is less than 17? So here's 10, and here's 30, and let's say 17's right there. Less than is shaded to the left. Again, this is still 1 over 20. That doesn't change. Okay, to find the area, the probability of this, uh, this side here is from 10 to 17, so that's a distance of 7. Times 1 over 20, um, 0 0.35. And 
let's look at D. Excuse me. What is the pro what is the probability of the process between twelve and seventeen? Okay, so here's ten. And here's thirty. And between twelve and seventeen. So let's say that's twelve. Let's say that's seventeen. Between them is shaded between them. Like that. And that's still a rectangle, so the area of a rectangle is the length times width. So this distance here is 5, 12, 17 minus 12, times our height, which is still 1 over 20. And that gives us 5 twentieths, which is 0 0.25 again. And those would be your answers for the uniform distribution. Not a hard um, uh, problem, um, usually. Now, just in general, talking about probability density functions, this is an equation used to compute probabilities of continuous random variables that satisfies, and this just kind of makes sense with what we've already been talking about. A total area under the graph of the equation over all possible values of the random variable must equal 1. Total area is 1. Um, well, again, we said area ties directly to probability, and all probability adds up to 100%, or 1. Well, number two, the height of the graph is greater than or equal to zero for all values. You can't have negative probabilities. Um, so that kind of makes sense. Now here's just to really emphasize that the area under the graph of a density function over an interval represents the probability of observing a value of the random variable in that, that interval. So again, area ties directly to probability. Now for a normal distribution, a, this is a continuous random variable has a normal probability distribution if its relative frequency histogram of the random variable has the shape of a normal curve. What does that mean? You draw your bar graph and this uh, says if its relative frequency histogram So actually, it could um, it's not just relative frequency, but frequency histogram looks like the same thing, if you remember. If we draw that, and that's what some of the problems may actually ask you to do, is to draw it. If we look at the center of each bar, bar and connect it together, the question becomes, does it more or less look like a bow shape? Um, and I don't draw it very well, but, <laughs> um, you know, that, that does look more or less like a, a bow shape. So that's what you're saying. Come up with the um, frequency histogram and see what it looks like. Okay, some properties of the normal density curve. It's symmetric about its mean. If I look at a graph, our bell shape, right here in the middle is our mean. And that's symmetric about it. That means that if, uh, if I take a look at this side right over here, if I flip it across the mean, it would land exactly on this. In terms of this, this, this doesn't look symmetric. Um, in terms of the, the points, if I picked a point here, if I went straight over to here, let's say that distance is 5. If I went straight over to this side, that distance would also be 5. That's what uh, symmetric means. Since the mean equals the median equals mode, highest point occurs at x equals mu. And this is so this is mu, our highest point. Inflection points at mu minus one standard deviation, mu plus one standard deviation. Now inflection points, if I look at um this part of the graph right here, see how it's curved up? That's concave up. See this point right here? It's curved down down. That's concave down. So the inflection point is where it changes. Now the area under the curve is 1. That's just uh, what we've already said. All probability has to add up to 1. Uh, area on the right equals area on the left, each being 1 half. Well, if the total adds up to 1, then this has to be 1 half or 0 0.5, and this has to be 1 half 0 0.5. Now the graph as you go to the left and right doesn't actually touch the horizontal axis, just comes real close. So this is continuous, it keeps going going on here. Just gets real close. 
And then our Moo, Moo plus one plus plus or minus one standard deviation is 68% of the data. Moo plus or minus two standard deviations is 95% of the data, and Moo plus plus or minus three standard deviations is 99.7% of the data. That's our empirical rule that we talked about before. Um, one last thing I want to um, mention here: normal does not mean any good or bad. It's relative relative to everything else that's uh, you're studying. Um, so normal just means that you're about the same as everybody else. Not good, not bad. Um, normal might be that you break the law. Um, you know, everybody speeds, for example. Um, the person who doesn't speed would be the one who's not in, in the normal distribution. They're over here on the edges, maybe. You got some people maybe commit a thousand crimes per week, and you got some people over here may commit commit zero crimes per week. Now you say a thousand, and you think, well, that, that's that would be that wouldn't be the norm, but it actually probably is. If you think about it, when you're out driving, and you're going to speed limit, you go over the speed limit just a little bit, one mile per hour, or even point one mile per hour. You just broke the speed limit. You go back under the speed limit and then you go back over it. That's another break in the law. And there are separate incidences. Uh, anybody that's gotten a ticket uh, will tell you you don't get a free ticket. You don't get a free pass the rest of the day to never get another ticket. If you speed and then you immediately start speeding again, you'll get the second ticket. So um, over here, this isn't maybe a thousand. Maybe a thousand's the norm uh, where everybody falls. So again, normal does not mean good or bad, just where about what else, everybody else is doing. And that's the end of that section, I believe. Short section. There's some problems uh, in the section on that, but they're just um, not, not uh, where I think you need to see an example. They're really straightforward. Stop the recorders here. Properties of the normal distribution.